Today, I want to talk about how Bed Bath & Beyond was illegally manipulated into bankruptcy. I want to explain why BBBY was shorted in this way, who actually stood to benefit, and who actually did the shorting. So stay tuned, and let's make some money. And now I want to dive straight in with the key information. So, first let's talk about what kind of impact that illegal shorting had on the Bed Bath & Beyond stock. You can see over the last five years, Bed Bath & Beyond is down from $20 per share to just $0.18 cents per share a fall of over 99% over the last five years. Now, obviously during 2021, Bed Bath & Beyond hit highs of around $35 per share. So that's a significant decline from $35 down to only 18 cents. But where it really starts to become clear is when you look at what kind of impact that had on the Bed Bath & Beyond market capitalization. You can see Bed Bath & Beyond with its current 18 or 19 cent share price has a market cap of just $84.4 million. If you rewind back to the peak of 2021, Bed Bath & Beyond had a price of around $36 per share. So that's a market capitalization of nearly $17 billion. That means that whoever buys the assets of Bed Bath & Beyond has just received a $16.72 billion discount. Now that'll all come clear over the next few minutes. Now I personally, I'm pretty chuffed if I go to the shop and I see something on a 10 or 25% discount. If it's buy one, get one free or 50% off, I'm pretty much guaranteed to purchase. But if I was offered a 99.99% discount, that just seems almost too good to pass up. And that's likely what some lucky purchaser is about to receive on Bed Bath & Beyond, a 99.99% discount from $16.8 billion to just $84 million or even less. Now you can see Chaotic Good just tweeted saying that Overstock.com has just offered $21.5 million for Bed Bath & Beyond. Now, I personally think this is why short sellers like to work with big businesses to illegally short genuine American companies for a massive, massive discount for that buying large business. Let's say there's a company that wanted to buy out Bed Bath & Beyond. Instead of paying $16.8 billion, they can just engage their friend, the synthetic illegal short seller, get them to crush that buying opportunity company, and you can buy that company for rock bottom prices. Now, I'm not saying that Overstock was working with short sellers to crush Bed Bath & Beyond. I want to explain who I think the true purchaser will be in a little while. But this article says that Overstock.com has just put in a $21.5 million bid for some of Bed Bath & Beyond's assets, including its intellectual property or IP, business internet and mobile properties and all business data. This comes after the bankrupt retailer sought Chapter 11 protection in April, following months of failed turnaround efforts and bankruptcy warnings. If the bid or a bid goes through, all Bed Bath & Beyond stores will be closed for good, and the bid only includes certain assets and liabilities, excluding brick and mortar stores. So I think the true purchaser of Bed Bath & Beyond is some kind of very large internet retailer that maybe has a record or is known for working with short sellers. But to this very large online internet retailer, instead of paying $16.8 billion for Bed Bath & Beyond, just simply hit up their old friend, the illegal naked short seller, ask them to crush Bed Bath & Beyond into the ground so they could buy it up for a measly $20 million. As I said, I don't think that it is Overstock, but let's continue reading this article. It says Overstock.com has been selected as the stalking horse bidder for the intellectual property behind Bed Bath & Beyond's namesake banner, giving them the ability to get the first bid on Bed Bath & Beyond's remaining assets. As it says, Overstock is just simply the stalking horse bidder getting the first bid. It doesn't mean Overstock will be getting the final bid. I think actually that's gonna be someone else. So which large online retail company do we know that has known links to short sellers? Well, check out this photo of Jeff Bezos and Ken Griffin. Obviously, Jeff Bezos, owner of Amazon, has a very close relationship with Ken Griffin of Citadel Securities, known potentially for synthetic short selling. And it says here, the Bed Bath & Beyond bankruptcy creates a $5 billion opportunity for Target or Amazon. Maybe Jeff Bezos hit up his old pal, Ken Griffin, asked him to synthetically short Bed Bath & Beyond into the ground to generate a $5 billion opportunity for Amazon and to give him the opportunity to buy a relatively successful business for pennies on a dollar. It said the liquidation plan of Bed Bath & Beyond leaves a long-term prize of about $5 billion in annual revenue for competitors. 
We believe that we're entering a new phase of retail industry consolidation and that Target, Walmart and Amazon will be long-term share beneficiaries. The liquidation will accelerate market share gains that rivals have been grabbing for years at Bed Bath & Beyond's expense. We know Bed Bath & Beyond still generates more than $5 billion in revenue, so that's just an extra $5 billion in revenue for Amazon to generate. And as I said at the start of the video, I believe this is one of the main reasons why genuine American companies are shorted into the ground. It's to give other larger businesses an opportunity to buy these victims for pennies on the dollar. And the reason why I know that this won't happen to AMC and that Bed Bath & Beyond is just simply the sacrifice is because AMC is now running comparable to the entire previous decade with 100 plus less movies. Angela Tweak is saying, I'd imagine had there been the same amount, we would have crossed $3 billion in revenue at the box office already. We can see current quarter 2023 sales are already at $2.1 billion for the quarter, in line with 2017, 2016 and before. Even though the box office has already generated this massive revenue inflow, the number of theatrical releases is only 175 films, down from 288, or 269, 296. AMC is currently running comparable to 2017, 2016 and before, with significantly less releases, generating on average significantly more revenue. And as AMC continues to not go bankrupt, and as shorts continue getting squeezed in the wider market on their Tesla, Nvidia, and other short positions, AMC just effectively gets closer and closer to squeezing. And now speaking of which, I think I figured out why FINRA and the SEC have spent so long doing absolutely nothing on the illegal AMC manipulation. Huckleberry tweeted saying, what does a conflict of interest look like? He said, what if I told you that the two global investment superpowers, BlackRock and Vanguard, are currently managing the FINRA's retirement and savings plans? Two plus billion dollars with Vanguard and $644 million is being advised and invested with BlackRock. At this point, it really wouldn't surprise me if FINRA and the SEC even had part of their retirement benefit plans, even invested into hedge funds like Citadel. And that would then obviously make sense as to why FINRA and the SEC don't pursue Citadel, because if they pursued Citadel and found out about the crimes and had to shut down Citadel as a hedge fund, this retirement system would effectively lose tons and tons of money. FINRA and the SEC is effectively being negligent in their duties and not performing proper investigations into companies like BlackRock, Vanguard and Citadel simply to protect their retirement savings plans. Now obviously I'm not here to say whether that's right or wrong. Obviously genuine employees shouldn't lose their entire retirement savings just because their company, aka FINRA or the SEC, invested the pensions into the wrong hedge fund. But at some point, I do believe that justice does need to be served against these illegal manipulative hedge funds, just like Citadel. And that's obviously why FINRA and the SEC don't want AMC to squeeze, because BlackRock and Vanguard would lose tons and tons of money in the resulting market crash, effectively leading to FINRA and SEC employees losing their retirement pensions. You can see here the FINRA Savings Plus plan has its investments invested directly into Vanguard. And in the next screenshot again, the FINRA employees retirement plan has those assets invested into BlackRock. Obviously, as I said, this isn't the full screenshots and it isn't all of those retirement plans all combined into one. So it really wouldn't surprise me at this point if they even have some of these retirement plan pension monies invested into Citadel. I spoke the other day about how Gary Gensler is about to be fired, which I personally believe would be good for the market, as it means the SEC would actually get something more done. With no Gary Gensler at the helm and with no Hester Pierce at the helm either, effectively market manipulation would likely come under more scrutiny. However, I do also see the other side of the argument, and maybe Warren Davidson is trying to oust Gary Gensler because he's finally doing something against these short sellers. And something that maybe supports that theory is the fact that Doug Sifu is actually supporting Warren Davidson in his attempt to fire Gary Gensler. Obviously, Doug Sifu, the CEO of Virtue Financial, is one of those names that crops up as a frequent short seller and potentially a legal short seller of AMC. And therefore, if CEOs like Doug Sifu and Ken Griffin are for Gary Gensler's firing, maybe that means that Gary Gensler is actually starting to do something and pose a threat to the short sellers. 
But finally, StockSense Frank has tweeted a Federal Reserve alert. The Federal Reserve Board announces that results from its annual bank stress tests will be released on Wednesday, June 28th. That means that on June 28th, we will finally see exactly which banks are likely to go bankrupt over the next few months and which banks have been failing these stress tests. Now that should be interesting as it will effectively show us exactly which regional banks are next in line to collapse and also if any mid-sized or large banks are at risk of collapsing as well. So again we can effectively use that to figure out when the next bank is likely to collapse if it's only a few days away or maybe a few weeks or a few months away which should obviously lead into the next leg down of the market crash. But guys be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.